Some businesses succeed, some don't. Then there are those that seem to have been around forever. The true entrepreneurial success story. How did they do it? What was their vision? What makes a success? In this special episode for Eye on Annapolis, we speak with the true success stories. Those business owners that have been around for decades, learn from their successes and failures. Now, here's host John Fernay. This morning we're in a cavernous room surrounded by beauty on four walls. Here we are at the Mitchell Gallery, which a lot of people may or may not know really exists in Annapolis. And Annapolis has a lot of galleries that you see doting West Street and Main Street, and you can go in and see, and that's the, that's the purchase type of a gallery. Over here on the campus of St. John's College, just adjacent to the Francis Scott Key Auditorium, we have the Mitchell Gallery, which is the real deal. And with us, we have Heidi Schaller, who is the director, and we, and we have Lucinda Edinburgh, who is the art educator for the Mitchell Gallery. How are you guys? Good. We're fine, thanks. How are you? Good. The Mitchell Gallery is such a gem in Annapolis, and I've known about it for years, and uh, as have a lot of people, but it's somewhat tucked away and hidden, I think, um, to a degree. I mean, St. John's, you know, unfortunately, sort of seems to take a little bit of a shadow to the Naval Academy when it, you know, in, in sports, except for croquet. Um, and it's a much smaller school. It, it's a totally different vibe than you've got, um, but it's equally as important to the culture and the vibe and the history of Annapolis. And to have a, I'm going to say it's a world-class art gallery here, and I don't think I'm exaggerating that at all, right here in our backyard is just absolutely fantastic. So can you tell us a little bit, Heidi, about the about the gallery and where did it start? The Mitchell Gallery was founded in the fall of 1989. Uh, philanthropist Elizabeth Myers Mitchell gave the seed money for the construction and our vice president at the time, Jeff Bishop, was the visionary man who wanted to bring together Annapolis and the St. John's College campus community and establish a town and gown relationship and thought that the fine arts and having a college museum here in the center of campus would be a good solution for that. And so over our 30 years, we have worked hard to bring exhibitions of world-class quality and art educational programs related to those exhibitions for the citizens of Annapolis and Arundel County in the Mid-Atlantic region. The, the gallery itself is, is this a membership gallery, or is this open to... The admission is free. We welcome membership. We welcome sponsorship and appreciate the support that we have the, from the community. So, and, and what typically are the hours that somebody could come here and see the different exhibits that you have? Uh, when we have exhibits on view, we're open six days a week from noon to 5 p.m., Tuesday through Sunday. We're also open Friday evenings before the college's Friday evening lecture or concert. Okay. And our website is a great resource for, you know, being the go-to for our hours and all of our programs, times, etc. Okay, what's what and what is the website? Is it a big long complicated one? SJ SJC.edu backward slash Mitchell dash gallery. Simple enough. Lucinda, what is your role here as the um art educator in the well, it, it's multifaceted because, you know, we have school groups that come in, and so we try to either enhance what's in the curriculum or support directly what's in the curriculum for all age groups. Uh, we have senior citizen groups that come in, and we have, you know, lectures. We have groups from the community college and Maryland Institute College of Art. And so we have a pretty wide audience of, of students, both young and old. And so my responsibility is giving tours and lectures. Uh, we have docents that give tours on Thursday afternoons from noon to three. So I help with their education. And uh, then we do some hands-on workshops, uh, some directly related with the tours and some uh, separate as uh, standalone, the, the Tuesday Try It for Adults, which is a program to introduce an idea or medium or technique of the exhibition. And it's for complete novices, and so it's been really fun to see the, the revelation, you know, that uh, many of these people experience. The aha moments, I mm -hmm. guess, that come mm -hmm. through here. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I, right now we've got American Impressionalism that's mm -hmm. hanging in the uh, Impressionism. Mm -hmm. I made up a new word, Impressionalism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> impressionism here in, in the gallery. And I'm, I'm assuming as an art educator and as, you know, art history, 
you all have specialties and, and, and preferences and whatnot. Do you have to re-educate yourself on everything that comes in? You know, maybe you're not into the Impressionism. Is that, do you, do you need to re-educate yourself or do we have well, enough experience at this point? To <laughs> well, you know, each exhibition has its unique qualities about it. We've had American Impressionist works before and, and I think both of us, you know, having a wide education in art history, you know, we're, you know, we're pretty familiar with, within, you know, a, a genre. But, you know, when these come as individual collections, they, they have, you know, unique aspects about them. And sometimes, you know, there are artists that we're not familiar with. And um, so, and then that's, I think, Heidi, I think you'd agree, that's part of the excitement is that every exhibition is unique and it is a new education, you know, not completely from scratch. Opportunity for us mm. to learn mm -hmm. consistently, too. But Lucinda, as the art educator, she is the front woman. She is the resident expert on everything out here in the gallery. So, I mean, her wealth of knowledge and broad educational experience is wonderful a wonderful resource for the community in addition she teaches art history at the community college and oh. so is able to you know constantly broaden all of that experience spreading spreading the wealth and mm -hmm. and and bringing new fans in mm -hmm. now what types of exhibits can we expect at the Mitchell Gallery over the years or into the future i mean i know i know that i've been here one and there was a uh, a woodblock printing, carving type of a... We see everything, really. Everything from Asian ceramics, um, metalwork from the grasslands, uh, ancient grasslands of the steppe region to contemporary art of Jonathan Borofsky and Nancy Graves and... Uh, our county juried exhibition, we have Anne Arundel County sure. artists work on view, you know, being created as we speak. How do you, how does, how do you determine what comes? Now, each, each exhibition you said is about six weeks or so? Six or seven weeks. Six. Each of our museum quality exhibitions that run concurrent with the academic year from late August until about the middle of April. And then at the end of each year, we have the St. John's College Community Art Exhibit Faculty, Staff, and Student Show. Every other year, we have the uh, Anne Arundel County Juried Exhibition. Probably yeah, a it's, it's, it's a big range. No, it's a big range. And, I mean, that's what's fun about it is something local. And as Heidi said, you know, and we've had, you know, Alexander Calder silk screens. We've had Andy Warhol silk screens, you know. So, And then we have the traditional ukiyo-e, you know, Japanese woodblock prints, but then Last spring we had the Washington, you know, printmakers, you know, and uh, so those are contemporary artists. And then with the jury exhibition that we have, you know, it's really a good chance to showcase, you know, local artists. But we also had an exhibition last year of uh, faculty from Anne Arundel Community College of their art department, visual arts. And we had an exhibition of Annapolis Senior High uh, art students oh, maybe five four, years ago. Yeah, five years ago. So we do those, you know, kind of in between, and it's nice to really highlight, you know, in between the grades, we've had Matisse, we've had Picasso ceramics, you know, so it's nice to intersperse sort of our local heroes, you know, sure. and with, um, well, we you know, do have, the other We do grades. have an awful lot of talent in the, in the area. I know mm -hmm. I'm always uh, shocked and amazed whether I... Who is responsible for wrangling up the different exhibits? Is that... Is that Lucinda and I both, between um, our colleagues in the museum field, collectors who we know across the board, or, you know, museums across the country. So how, how, does, how does that go about? How do we get these beautiful paintings that surround us here today? We have uh, the Mitchell Gallery Faculty Advisory Committee that consists of tutors, professors here at the college, and artists, uh, Mitchell Gallery staff, and a couple of students from St. John's College. Uh, look at the long range exhibition schedule and try to put together a season each academic year that has a range um, and brings different artists and objects and... Is there a, um, a thing where the artists and the exhibitions are like in this big old pool and saying, okay, we're available during this time? I mean, is it We have of... to actively seek. Mm -hmm. We have to... Mm -hmm. I mean, there are exhibition services and that's what they do mm -hmm. is they curate and you know, um, and circulate. I mean, even the Smithsonian has a traveling exhibition service. So 
you know, as Heidi said, you know, we look for things, but also, you know, we get approached, you know, to see, advertising. To see what, see what would fit. And, mm -hmm. and the types of things, I mean, you said you, you mentioned museums, so this is something that you could borrow from a, a, a museum someplace else. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Just as easily as you could have a student that's like the great-great-grandson of a Vanderbilt and you're pulling something out of the Biltmore or something, mm -hmm. <laughs> something mm -hmm. along those lines. Their collection. As, as mm -hmm. a private collection mm -hmm. to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where does the support come from? Um, we, we don't charge admission. I mean, obviously, this is a, I'm going to presume that the school pays the electricity bill and gives you the That's gives a you great the question, place John. Rent free. For many years, St. John's College has given great, considerable financial support to the Mitchell Gallery. In more, the more recent uh, five to 10 year period, um, Lucinda and I and our Mitchell Gallery Board of Advisors that consists of 30 volunteers from the community um, have actively um, tried to increase our membership program and uh, just a couple of years ago established a sponsorship program. And so we're grateful to um, businesses and individuals in the community who Okay, so that's to that. similar to, we'll say, like the National Aquarium where you've got a, an annual sponsorship of the, uh, we'll say, the Elizabeth Mitchell level and, the, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, and that's all on our webpage, too. We do have membership information there. Okay, what, is, what does membership get you? Uh, Any, uh, it depends on the level that you sign up for, but it can um, at the plus level, which is $125 for an individual, $175 for family. Or okay, dual. so th we're, not we're not talking these $10,000 checks here. And it goes up. I mean, it, I mean, it could yeah, be. It can be increasingly. <laughs> we'll but at this level, here's the great benefit of the plus level is the um, you receive North American Reciprocal Museum, which means that you have uh, oftentimes free or half ad half price admission to museums all across North America, thousands of museums, uh, gardens, historic houses, etc. So that is a great benefit that pays for itself. And and that point of entry is is not. Not a whole lot. I mean, so you're not. I mean, obviously, you would be love to have right. love to have a donor that's yes, that's at the at the very reasonable five hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's 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 yes. wonderful. But I mean, it, it is is a very reasonable thing to be able to get in here mm -hmm. to support the arts in uh, Annapolis and actually across America, because mm -hmm. I mean, you're bringing it bringing it here. And we couldn't begin to do what we do without the support of our Mitchell Gallery Board of Advisors, which I told you is thirty volunteers from the community who work tirelessly to uh, increase membership, um, get the word out about the Mitchell Gallery in the community, bring in sponsorship, and they are just a dedicated board overseen by Casey Pingle, who's been our board chair for the last seven years. And it just we are so grateful for all that they do. Well, and the physical labor they do, too. I mean, you know, schlepping things for receptions and... Now, is that like the board of directors of a company or, a, or of, a, of a nonprofit, or is I mean, who, where's the, the where's the corporate governance of the Mitchell Gallery? Is that that's through St. John's College? Okay, that's through St. John's College, and our board of advisors is an advisory board that you know they travel and they might come back and say, "Hey, I saw this really wonderful exhibition out in California. You should see if we can bring it here to Annapolis." Right. Just a good idea and great, great, great workers. What's been your favorite exhibits that have come mm. through here? You... That's, that's like choosing a favorite child. You're not supposed oh, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, I, <laughs> Depends on the day. But, uh, well, I mean, you know, I think Heidi would agree. You know, there are some exhibitions that, you know, we feel more in tune to than others. And some, you know, we've sort of laughed about that have been really terrific exhibitions. But we, what I think back, it was probably been about 15 years ago, we had an, a wonderful, it was really a wonderful exhibition of Ruo. Uh, prints um, and uh, I mean, and they really were very thoughtful. But it was they were, it were very dark in theme, and it was a January February exhibition, so the light levels had to be really low because they were yeah. works on paper, you know. And and the, the the exhibition that followed that was actually American Impressionists. It was, it was from a private collector, and paintings can be up at a higher level, light level. And it was spring, and suddenly, you know, after we closed that Rouault exhibition, and then we had this the spring opening and these paintings and everything, we thought, oh my gosh, we felt like we'd been flogged during Lent, you know, and for the Rouault. And I mean, but it was a wonderful exhibition, but they, they all have their nuances, you know, about them. And, you know, when the first uh, Ukiyo-e woodblock 
show we had, or one of the first in, in the last 10 years, was just about the time of the tsunami. And so, you know, the public was very sensitive to, you know, Japanese culture. And, you know, we were really crowded. And it was a fabulous, you know, fabulous exhibition. So, you know, there are aspects about each of them that, you know, were unique. And that's what's fun. And, and also what our visitors have to say about them, too. You know, their input is always really interesting. Uh, I, I particularly am sort of uh, sensitive to the, the kindergartners that come in um, because, you know, they just say it like it is, and they, they right. come out with these profound things that sometimes make me feel very heavy, and other times, you know, I sort of laugh about, you know, because they just point out the obvious. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's funny. Art, art wine, and beer, mm-hmm. I find. Um, I don't get into that, oh, I smell the... You can, the cherry cask mm-hmm. and the I love the way that you know I, I look at a piece of art and it's whether I, I whether I like it or not mm-hmm. and it's whether I like a beer or not not like a beer mm-hmm. or a glass of wine and I, th- I really don't think you could put a $500 glass of wine in front of me and a $20 glass of wine in front of me and I would know the difference mm-hmm. uh, similarly I think that if I look at different artworks I would not know uh, I mean there are certain artists that have uh, a look about them mm-hmm. That you would, oh yeah, that's that's a Picasso. I know that, um, but I just sit there and I and I, I look and I go, wow, that's just absolutely beautiful. The talent that went behind it, the uh, the time that went into it, and you know, it's even more fascinating to me when you look at something that's very old. And you know, now today we've got the technology, which is you know, I see the, the kids sketching on the uh, iPads and whatnot, and and that's very beautiful. It's a whole different type of a of a tech. But I'm like, wow, you know, here's somebody that. You know, we weren't working off of a photograph. We were working off of a, you know somebody sitting there that was moving, and, and it's it's just a, it's it's amazing. Do you have a favorite style of art that you guys like, or uh, do you? I mean, do you prefer mm-hmm. to have uh, you know like the, you know, say pottery? I mean, you talked you talked you talked about different um, you know pottery. I mean, or or sculpting or. Well, you know, that's an interesting question because going back to do you have a favorite exhibition? In in the spring of 1992, we had a very contemporary exhibition by the artist Jonathan Borofsky who came and spoke. And um, I would not have thought that I would have responded as positively to this um, prints and larger-than-life sculpture and beating hearts. And Jonathan Borofsky happens to be the sculptor of the Sculpt, uh, the piece of sculpture outside of Penn Station in Baltimore where there was all sorts of controversy. Oh, yes, the big yes, silver yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm, intersected. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it was such an exciting exhibition to have and the excitement on campus that it created. The students were intrigued and the gallery, the curtains were open so you know you could see through into the gallery as you walked by. It, it, it was really, it, it was surprisingly enjoyable. Well, I think that's probably what you said. I mean, you came in with a preconceived notion, if you will, in the back of your head, maybe not outwardly, that, okay, well, we'll just muscle through this and we'll get on to the next one. What's this going to be about? Um, And, you know, and and I think that that's such a beautiful thing was when you can come in with with an open mind on this. Oh, gosh. I mean, we've got kids. Gosh, that, a museum. Mm -hmm. And then you... get in there like oh my gosh this is so cool i didn't realize that they could do this and whether it could be art or it could be you know natural science or anything like that mm-hmm. when you come in with an open mind and you sit there and you look and you and it's, it's a beautiful thing it really is well and i was going to say you know my I, I don't see my job as convincing people to like something or not to like something i mean at the end of the day it's whatever the message is that speaks to the individual you know and it is very subjective you know it could bring back, you know, bad memories or good memories or, you know, nice thoughts. But my position is to give an understanding, you know, of, and it's not necessarily even in a historical context, but just in composition, you know, just to be aware uh, that what's incorporated in this painting in terms of, you know, composition, how it's laid out and colors and how they're purposefully used. And so you may still not like the painting, but then I hope that the viewer will have an understanding of the construction of it and say, you know, well, that's really interesting. I don't particularly like it, but it's you know, sure. it's, it's interesting. And I mean, you could sort of compare it to music. You know, many people don't care for Schoenberg in twelve tone row. You know, this atonality right. to it, but but you appreciate the innovation that it brought in music, and you think, oh, that's not my thing. But you know, you ex- you know appreciate the intellectuality of it, or 
you know, the construction. And that's kind of how I see my position, you know, is to bring a greater understanding to, you know, the works that are on view. And then, you know, add to that the context in which they're created. And, and you know, these in this room, you know, really do have a lot of, you know, sort of, you know, art history, but also sort of political history with them, too. And uh, American artists finding their own voice that previously collectors were looking to old masters. Do Now, I'm, I'm assuming because you teach at the community college mm-hmm. that you are a um, you are an artist at heart. Well, I was. <laughs> I'm not so much now, but um, yeah, I, I taught in the public schools and private schools, and um, so I, I do have a you know certification in teaching and um, an art and a fine art degree. But uh, my my graduate degree is in art history and philosophy. So uh, I think it dovetails well with the program with the college and the great books. I've read most of what they've read. I've not read the Iliad and the Odyssey in Greek as they do. But um, um, but you know I had to read Kant and Hegel and Tolstoy, and they read you know many of these things, and some of them are related um, you know to creativity and the intellectual process of that. So um, and teaching you know at the community college is actually it continues to be good grist for the mill because, you know, I'm still teaching even though I'm not teaching necessarily the same people. And, you know, I mean, I have a... I do have a syllabus here in a, in a you know, more confined kind of way, but it's good to keep those teaching skills up and remember, you know, who your audience is and who you're speaking to, and that's really important. You know, art can be very personal. And, you know, where a, a kindergartner doesn't necessarily think... Beyond that, I, I, yeah, I, I see that. I mean, I, I, I would even challenge you and mm-hmm. just say, not can be personal, but art is very personal. Mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. uh, and as, as you're right, I mean, a mm-hmm. kindergartner is is seeing you know blues and whites mm-hmm. and, and browns mm-hmm. and maybe some fingerprints, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's your job to sort of pull that all together for them. Yet, mm-hmm. you know, that that could bring reflections of a of a vacation to a mm-hmm. high schooler or to. Uh, mm-hmm painting that was hanging in you know grandma's house or something mm-hmm. like that so mm-hmm. it's it's very interesting are you an artist miss shaler i am not <laughs> I, I am not an artist per se no no when you're surrounded by all of this beautiful beautiful art and 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 talent in annapolis i mean you know our local artists are just truly extraordinary to see what they create in our bi- biennial uh, juried exhibition and you know in all of the galleries throughout town i have the greatest respect I tell you, I think that Annapolis is really up the ante. And I mean, you guys have been here 30 years. So that's you probably the, the forerunner is aside from just a couple galleries that we may have seen as far as shops go, mm-hmm. as far as bringing the arts to Annapolis. I certainly think that Jeff Huntington and his murals have really added to that. I certainly think that our current mayor, Gavin Buckley, has uh, been very accepting of that. And certainly Ellen Moyer, who's, you know, on the, who's been on the Art and Public Places commissions and whatnot. Uh, I think, it, you know, the art scene in Annapolis really has sort of risen. And I'm still a relative newcomer here. I've only been here about 20 years. Uh, no, a little bit more than that. But And it's so exciting to see that. Uh, it is, to, mm-hmm. and the Arts Council of Anne Arundel County does an amazing job mm-hmm. of supporting the yeah. artists mm-hmm. and the arts, but also getting the word out about Annapolis Arts mm-hmm. to you know all across the state. Mm-hmm. And on on the, on the state level, I see, I see grants that are coming out of the state to fund the different you know whether it be the uh, Anne Arundel Arts Council or the you know the city and and whatnot. And a lot of people don't realize uh, the different venues for art. Um, obviously, we've got some coffee shop artists, and we've mm-hmm. got you know, which which is a wonderful place to see some local artists there. But you look at Quiet Waters Park, mm-hmm. you look at the Annapolis Maritime Museum, you look at the Banneker Douglas Museum that has some wonderful art. You've got certainly historic Annapolis are under a little bit of construction mm-hmm. right now, but in their buildings and whatnot. And the Hammond Harwood House. And, yeah, and-, um, and and we we live in a living, thriving, growing museum, if you will. That's. Uh, a culturally we, rich town. We just live in such a special place, and when we have uh, unique opportunities like this, I mean, we're really lucky. We really have, you know, some dedicated people that are really um, focused on, you know, spreading the art, you know, around the the county. And and it's hard because it's it's a big county. It goes far north and far south. And you know, uh, April Nyman, you know, the Arts Council, and, and Brenda, you know, her sidekick. I mean, those two women are dynamo. And then when you think what Linnell Bowen did for Marilyn Hall, I mean, she's now retired. But, 
you know, she was just a bulldog in, in getting that going. Yeah. And, and Cindy McBride, I mean, she weathered, you know, all kinds of economic up and down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's really a stalwart, you know, um, face, you know, for the Annapolis, you know, retail galleries. And, you know, it's those kinds of people, you know, that, you know, have, have held, you know, fast, you know, at, at the helm that, you know, has made the way for the next, you know, set of leaders you know, to to come. And Jim Cheever's to add to that too, you know, the long right from the chief Academy curator. Museum. But but you know, he's got a finger in every pie and belongs to lots of arts organizations, you know. So and that's the thing is many of these people are more than just with us or Annapolis yeah. Symphony. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who who are the who are the up and comers? Who are the people that are that are moving and shaking in the art world as we as we move forward? Well, you know, um well, there's some new galleries, you know, Joe Fleming, you know, Contemporary Art, you know, she's been over on Maryland Avenue, you know, they're, you know, they're really starting to come up and, and, uh, of course, Art Farm, you know, is right. you know, trying, they've moved from West Street, you know, out to Chinkaman Round Road. And so, you know, those are, you know, those are, you know, Jeff is part of that group and Jimmy Davies and, you know, so there's a little cluster, you know, that's sort of, you know, emerging and, you know, trying to find their own voice. And Joe is, you know, doing contemporary art. And Patrice Drago, who writes the gallery column for the paper now, you know, she's an artist and um, and newer, you know, on the scene with contemporary art. And then Maryland Federation of Art is mm-hmm. helpful with that too, mm-hmm. in terms right. of you know the actively involved, mm-hmm. hardworking volunteers. You know, uh, so much of this is really on the back of so many volunteers, some of whom we have named Anna Greenberg, Jim Cheevers, who have uh, you know not only put the uh, Annapolis Arts on the map but just seen it through for 30 and 40. Maryland Hall celebrating their 40th mm-hmm. anniversary year. You know, I mean, aren't we fortunate to live in a community where... Somebody, somebody had the vision and said, hey, you know, I can take an abandoned high school right. and turn it into, mm-hmm. turn it into something, something special. Mm-hmm. I know I was, I was speaking with Maryland Hall not too long ago, and I had my dumb moment when they... Um, I knew that they were celebrating their 40th, and then they had UB40, and they had a whole bunch of programming that was all tied into this whole 40, and I'm like oblivious to this, and it's like, okay, I get it now. The joke's on me, and we'll we'll move right on. But what other exhibits are, and I I know that they change often, but what's what's on your horizon looking looking forward? Do you, can you divulge anything yet, or? We can divulge a few things for our 30th anniversary year, which this is, um, kicked it off in the end of August, and it will go through uh, June of 2020. Uh, we'll have the New Yorker um, cover uh, illustrator artist Mary Petty is our, our next exhibit. That's fun. That that'll be fun, you know. Pointed, witty. No, no question. No question, because you had mentioned the artist, uh, Lucinda. You had mentioned the artist for one exhibit had come down and, and done discussions and whatnot. And this obviously we have different artists here in this none of which are available to come probably <laughs> and, and do a discussion. But when you do have modern current art, do you typically have somebody to come down and, and, and interpret and discuss their? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Other, otherwise, that's left up to you. I suppose. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we have speakers who are authorities on, you know, specific topics. For uh, Amanda Burdan from the Brandywine Museum came and spoke uh, because her area of expertise is American Impressionists, and they're opening an exhibition of American Impressionists next spring. So she came and spoke. But for uh, the Mary Petty exhibition, we're actually getting Bob Mankoff, who was the former cartoon editor for The New Yorker, to come speak. Okay, neat. And uh, he was with them for 20 years and then retired, and now he's the um, cartoon editor for Esquire. So, and retooled. Oh. And uh, retooled. We're actually getting an artist. Uh, if you remember the Heckinger hardware store chain. Yes. John Heckinger had a collection of artwork there in his uh, headquarters there in, in Landover, and it was all artwork related to tools. And um, uh, Pete Hamill actually wrote a catalog for it, and uh, so we'll have uh, an artist um, who will come, you know, as part of the Heckinger collection and come and speak uh, for that. They were determining that date sometime in the winter. So, 
That's neat. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. neat. Yeah. So we've got the New Yorker. Mm-hmm. What else do we have? The Hettinger Collection will right. be our winter, mm-hmm. and then in the spring we'll have American Indian Art from the Thaw Collection. Oh. Eugene Thaw was uh, uh, an alum of the college from the class of 1947 and uh, world-renowned collector of old master paintings and prints. And Our art gallery is very common. I know that I didn't have them when I went to school. Are they very common in college settings? On college campuses, many college campuses have art galleries of varying range, whether it be a more contemporary gallery space with changing student art or a college museum such as we have here, an accredited college museum accredited by the American Alliance of Museums. And we're the only such museum in the state of Maryland in the company of the Baltimore Museum of Art, the Walters Art Gallery, but the only college museum that's accredited. So we're very proud of that. What was involved in the accreditation? We got it in 2012. And it was a two-year study, so it's, you know, um, we had to uh, apply to see if we qualified to apply. And it's a self-study, and you're looking at our mission demographics and, you know, physical facility and uh, um, exhibitions. And it really involved, uh, you know, financial, uh, you know, um, numbers. And, I mean, it really, it was really, you know, cleaning out the closets. and Self-examination. It really self-examination. And that's why I said to Heidi, even if we didn't get accreditation, it was a good thing to do. Um, for you know, the exercise, how, anyhow. For the exercise to see how we stand up against other museums. And, and uh, there are only f- six fine art museums in the state of Maryland that are accredited, so we're one of them. And uh, so that's really a prestigious thing to have. Congratulations on the uh, accreditation. That's yeah. that's a that's a big deal. Yeah, it was it was a big deal, and but it, it was a good exercise too because it also we know what other museums and their standards have to be as well. And there was a personal visit that came out. They have uh, board members that spent a couple of days with us, so it wasn't just you know words on paper. Um, you know that it's you know they did a personal you know Had walk two or walk. three yeah two or three day visit from other museums and and they know you know they know what what's supposed to happen so and being accredited allows us to bring the world class mm-hmm. art that we do mm-hmm. right. I mean we borrow from the, you know, the National Gallery of Art and the Baltimore Museum of Art Philadelphia and, Museum of Art yeah I mean mm-hmm. we borrow from you know Virginia Museum of Fine Arts we borrow from we borrow from the big boys you know and. That's um, fantastic. It's nice to have those relationships, you know, and 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 with the Naval Academy Museum, we've you know borrowed ship models, and you know some of their curators have come over to speak on exhibitions, and um, it's nice to have that reciprocity. All right now, sort of a fun question: Have you ever seen art, and 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 I know that you both can interpret art as any different ways that where you just look at it and go, huh? I I, I did that. I was at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and there was essentially a receipt to a, I believe it was a drive-in movie theater, mm-hmm. mounted on a white piece of paper in a frame. And I, I walked up to it and I went, interesting. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, it was... It was, it was Thought-provoking, you know? What is your experience I, I, you in association know, I guess it prob- with drive-ins? I, it it prob- probably served its purpose because it left me mm-hmm. with scratching my head going... You know, there there is some artist somewhere around here that stapled this receipt onto this piece of paper, put it in a frame, and has called it. <laughs> but is is there art that that you guys don't get or appreciate? I'm not going to ask you to name names, so. But is is there art that's just you're like, yeah, no, it's just not doing it for me. And and that's obviously a personal mm-hmm. choice. I know we've talked to, you know, there's no there's no right or wrong palate when it comes mm-hmm. to food. Mm-hmm. Um, right. There's plenty of stuff that I won't eat. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think from time to time there are a few things that um, I feel might be derivative or, you know, maybe not necessarily very original. Or uh, there, are, there aren't many things that I'm really turned off by, you know, um, which I guess is a good thing being in the trade. But, you know, now and again we get, we get something I think, hmm, you know, that, that's interesting but not highly original or I would have done something a little differently compositionally. You know, it depends on what, what it is and... In time period, uh, you know, I probably feel less biased about sculpture because um, sculpture can be interpreted in so many different ways, and you can walk around it. You know, it, it, right. you know, it, it, it's you know, tactile. Um, you know, th- three-dimensional pieces, you know, have a different they have a different vibe to them. But I don't think they're intellectually 
processed in the same way, you know, as a, as a sculpture in the round, you know. So, so my, I guess sort of my physical and intellectual reaction is very different in sculpture than it would be for prints or paintings. Right. That makes sense. Uh, so, makes sense. you know, it's a, it's a different interpretation for sure, but I guess I don't question sculpture quite the same way. I think that's... That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah. makes sense. Your response. Mm-hmm. How makes about you? What, what art do you enjoy most? Uh, you know, typically, I like, I like fun, uh, I would say fun modern art. There's an artist um, down in New Orleans that I've, uh, I've gotten a number of his things. Uh, well, you've got, I like George Rodriguez, who does the Blue Dog, mm-hmm. and um, Matt Renard, uh, who does some very, very colorful. I've got a couple of his sign prints that, uh, that he's done, which is uh, just sort of fun. And it's eclectic. I mm-hmm. mean, I you know when I, I travel, I try to always pick up something that's unique. Whether it be a you know it could be a batik print out of the Caribbean that I end up getting mounted, or it could be just uh, when I was some rice painting in China, which mm-hmm. I didn't particularly subject wise it did, I didn't like it, but I mean the fact that you know where you got it and and whatnot was kind of neat, and I think that it's um you know it's very eclectic. I don't think you need to be any one particular thing. Um, you know, some photography, uh, I'm, I'm getting tired of uh, a lot of the photography just because I, I think we've, now with the advent of smartphones mm-hmm. and everything else and, and the digital SLRs, mm-hmm. we've got a lot of hobbyists and not very few artists when it mm-hmm. comes to that. And I think it's it's funny, I've got several people that shoot for me for different events, for Ion Annapolis, and uh, you know, when I take pictures, I call them, I purposely call them snapshots uh, as opposed to because I, I don't, I don't want to take that away. Because I mean, these are the guys that know the angles. They know where. They know how to anticipate. You know, recently I saw, you know, Paul Gillespie's display uh, that he's been taking uh, the faces of the Capitol Gazette. And could I take a snapshot of every one of those people? With without a doubt. Um, just as you look at it, and I know that you looked at the one portrait of Maria Hyacin, and she's holding the, uh, the the portrait of her head's angled the same way, and and you look into the eyes, you can. You know, you can see the wrinkles, and uh, I mean, as you was going through that, I could, I could say, you know, okay, Hutzel, I don't think he had those wrinkles before, you know, you know this this mm-hmm. event. So I think, you know, I, I do like really good photography. I mean, you look at, um, you know, Ansel Adams mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. I think that's uh, pretty spectacular. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as we wrap up, what events do we have here? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you have a grand gala openings for all of the. Uh, exhibits that come through here of some sort. And are there any events that go on throughout the year that we can support? We have, uh, and once again, I'll, I'll direct everyone to our webpage, sjc.edu backwards slash Mitchell dash gallery, which has all of our programs. For each exhibition, we have lectures. We, For most of them, we have the hands-on triad that Lucinda was talking about. Uh, Lucinda has a wonderful 30-minute uh, Art Express lunchtime tour once per exhibition, which is, uh, you know, offered for people to walk on in for a quick, you know, look at whatever the exhibition is we have. Uh, she has a often has a closing Sunday afternoon tour at 3 p.m. And then, as we said, we bring in uh, collectors or curators or scholars, you know, once per exhibition. So we offer, you know, a great deal. Uh, in terms of gala openings uh, for our members, we have um, openings, you know, related to each exhibition. Okay. Mm-hmm. And are, is there any plans for a... Uh like a, a grand gala at a local hotel to support the Mitchell Gallery or anything like that, or is that is there anything along those lines? Not at the moment, but we're you know we're always open to ideas and thinking of ways to uh, make what we do you know exciting and accessible for all. Heidi Schaller, who is the director of the Mitchell Gallery mm-hmm. at St. John's College, and Lucinda Edinburgh, who is the art educator. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys very much for spending some time this mm-hmm. morning, and uh, this is just absolutely spectacular, and I do encourage everybody to get down here. Uh, the hours are convenient. It was You said it was Tuesday through Sunday. Noon to five. Noon to five. So you can, um, midweek, it's a, if you work in town, it's a perfect uh, time to take a little bit of a long lunch and and linger and uh, meet the fine folks that are here and uh, see the great art that we're bringing from here. It's uh, it's really a very special treat that Annapolis has this. This is not uh, this is something that you see in D.C., in Baltimore, in Philadelphia, in New York. Um, 
I would think it's very rare that you would see it, something here, and we're very fortunate to have the Mitchell Gallery, as well as you two, uh, making it all run. Thanks for listening to this special podcast for I Am Annapolis. Please be sure to visit IamAnnapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinions. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the I Am Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you your local news direct to your phone or tablet every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Subscribe on iTunes or Google Play.